I'm David Rothenberg. The program's any Saturday. You're listening to WBAI FM 99.5 listener sponsored radio in New York City. Deidre, are you with us? Ah, good morning, David. Yes, I am. Good. And Pascal hopefully will be joining us. Yeah, hopefully he hasn't. I, I imagine yet. he's getting out of his cell just about now, and he told me and that within the pod that he's in, all of the phones are right there. He's so in New Jersey in Bergen County, in the Bergen County Jail, which is now a detention center. Deirdre, tell us, uh, last week I told the audience and I repeated that uh, Pascal is facing deportation to Haiti, where he's never been, that he was born to a United States citizen who was in the Air Force and born in Germany. And because he's formally incarcerated, was released from prison five years ago, has two uh, degrees, a master's degree and a degree from the New York Theological Seminary, has set up a nonprofit program working with children at risk and under a edict from President Trump of a year ago, faces deportation. I guess that's the sum and substance of it. How did you uh, how did you become involved with this? What is the status of it and what can people do? That's I guess what we have to confront. Uh well, the short story of how I became involved involves uh our mutual friend Richard Holler who invited me to go into see a production, a theatrical production that he was doing in Otisville prison in 2012. And it was a really fabulous uh, production because of the energy of the men uh, who were participating in it and the intensity of the, uh, the, the show was just incredible. And I got up at the end and said, and what a great experience it was for me. I knew that, you know, the second Richard invited me to go into the prison, I knew I had to go because there's so many people who are behind the walls in this country, and it uh, was important for me to have that experience of at least seeing what was like, even in a small little little part of it. So, after when everybody was mixing and talking to the actors, one of them came up to me and introduced himself, and that was uh, Pasquale Secour Carpentier. And we connected on the fact that we were both trying to write screenplays, uh, you know, with the uh, uh, kind of ended up forming a, a two-person writing uh, group. We would send stuff back and forth to each other in the mail, and we got to be very friendly. Um, it was a while before I knew why he was in prison, um, because it's kind of rude to ask, uh, but he told me. And um, I had to take some time and think about my response when I got the letter and decided that it was many times when I was younger that I had committed uh, acts that could be dangerous because I was an alcoholic. Uh, so that that could have, you know, been in the same place or at least in, in some measure. Anyway, did that they were doing a. Oh, it sounds like he might be here. Uh, this, deciding that they were doing a, a campaign for him, I decided to help, and we've been close friends ever since. And I was there the day that he got out of prison. Well, from what you had told me and what Richard Holler told me, clearly motivated. And, you know, when you were talking about, told you what he did at Fortune Society, we all, the guys say, the, Sam Rivera would say, the crime is what I did. It's not who I am. And we all know that we change as we grow up. And prison is for the punishment, not for the punishment con to be continued after people come out, which is what Pascal Carpentier is facing with this absurd uh edict, uh, and he went before a, a Trump-appointed judge who was indifferent. Pascal, are you with us? No. I am. Uh, Good morning. Yes? Oh. Is that you, Pascal? I am. Welcome. Yes, How are you? Thank you for having me on. Well, I, uh, <laughs> don't make me cry. I'm sure you can imagine. Um, your fiancé said that we were on a panel together a few years ago at the public library. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure if you would remember, uh, but um, we did a panel on uh, criminal justice and education. I remember it. And, and the, the, what's the name of the fellow from um, uh, that heads? He was there. The one that cries every time that uh, he hears a story. 
Scott, is it Scott? Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is you were born in Germany, but your father was a citizen. Why does that make you? Are you not a citizen and, uh, as a result of being born to American citizens? Well, the, 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 um, the people at ICE are not willing to concede to that. So, um, you know, that's why we're still in these court proceedings. So my, my father was a sergeant in the Air Force for um, uh, two years in Germany. And in the final, um, uh, final few months, uh, before being discharged, I was born there, and um, and you grew up here, the, right? Exactly, and came back to the United States with him, where uh, he was finally discharged. And so, you know, the government has his uh, military records, um, and uh, you, you know, even the copy that we were provided, uh, it indicates that he's a U.S. citizen. Uh, but they're not willing to accept that. They're saying that it's um, it's 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 not sufficient to prove citizenship, and so they're contending it. So you were born in Germany, but they want to send you to Haiti. Yes, and <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's really mind-boggling how they came to that conclusion. How are you fair? How long have you been in? At, you're in Bergen County. At, are you not at the Hackensack Gold County Jail? Correct. Yeah. How you fair? How long have you been there? And how you how you know how are you faring there? What are the conditions under which you are? Um. So I'm going on four months. Uh. It's um. For me, it's nightmarish because I. For one, um never ever ever in a million years would have thought I would have ever seen a jail cell again and um, it's dreary it's it's um, it's depressing I'm still in shock sometimes um, it's very surreal and um, it, it's 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 completely erasing so much of what I've worked very hard to accomplish. The college degrees, the, the nonprofit organization you set up for risk at kids. You know, there were two similar cases, well, not similar, but two cases where the governor, uh, uh, I'm sure you know them by now, Khalil Cumberbatch and Colin uh, Abalon, who both both uh, were facing deportation and Governor Cuomo's signed papers that eradicated, that absolved them from their charges, and they are now here. Uh, right. Is that is that the goal, uh, Deirdre? Maybe you can fill us in. Is that the goal now to get the governor? And how do we go about it? And most important, uh, BAI listeners are doers and activists. How can people support this incredible act of injustice? Uh, to, not the, not to support the injustice, but to help. Re 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 Peel it. Uh, well, there's a number of ways. First of all, we do not trust that the court is going to do the right thing. So that is why we started a petition on Organize Four uh, that people can sign. Uh, it's uh, it's at uh, campaigns.organize4for.org/p/bring-pascal-home. Um, we also uh, have a Facebook page uh, where you would just need to search free Pascal Shakuri Carpentier. Pascal, um, P-A-S-C-A-L? That's right, Shakuri, S-H-A-K-O-U-R-E, Carpentier, C-H-A-R-P-E-N-T-I-E-R. -E -E yeah. Um, there's also I'm, I'm invariably going to get uh, email that to me after if you could because invariably listeners don't have a pen or a pencil at hand and they're going to contact me so if I have it 
then we can forward it. Um, yes, I have. Uh, Pascal, I have are you are you risk. are you being allowed visitors? Are you are, is the support that you're getting helping your mental state at all? Your your uh, I know it's tough. You have to go back in the cell every night, and and as you said, dreary and so, surreal. Yeah, so when it, it set up here for a while, um, they had no visits, no visits. Um, it wasn't until uh, I would say a few weeks ago that they started to reopen for visits. The visits are like you know what you see in the movies. They're um, non-contact booths with the window in Tell between the phone on each side. Oh my God, they're, they're still there? Minutes. That's, yeah. Jesus. The, the visits are just 15 minutes each, um, which is, I, I don't understand why, because sometimes um, it's only one person there, but you know, they're um, invoking COVID-19 every time there's something that uh, they're denying us uh, the privilege of having. Uh, are you? Um, uh, is it safe for you from the from the um, from the virus inside? Are the conditions safe? Uh, fortunately, so far. Fortunately, so far. Well, is it crowded? Uh, and yeah. is it all? Uh, yeah, well, I have so many questions. Uh, is everyone there with you facing deportation? And if so, how many? Yes. Yeah, so um, my entire unit. We have. Um, I think it's a, it's about 50 something people on my unit and uh yeah everyone here is for deportation uh proceedings um and every week we get about i would say maybe four to eight sometimes nine new admissions um that are being brought in um arrested from mostly New York City area. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a machine. <laughs> it's, yeah. How were you arrested and wh how did they come to you and what were the circumstances? Did they send you a letter or they ask you to report somewhere? No, 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 no. They just had um, eight federal agents show up at my house. Um, they no warning, no warning at all? No, no warning at all. They came under the pretense that they were they, they had questions about something, and um, my wife inadvertently let them in, and then um, they just surrounded me, and um, they said, "Hey, we we uh, we're here to arrest you." They handcuffed me um, to the shop. Did you know why? I had no idea why. Um, as they were taking me out. Uh, they said that um, uh, that uh, ICE had a warrant for my arrest, and uh, they were executing the arrest and bringing me to a federal plaza for processing. Uh, Pascal, you'd been out of prison for five years. Had you had any contact with the law, anything that would uh, instigate that kind of action? No, not at all. Not at all. You would figure that these people would say, hey, look at a person who's completely transformed their life and has taken every opportunity to improve himself and to bring, you know, product, productivity and um, positive uh, endeavors to his community. Um, but yet it's the opposite. It's as if, you know, you know, I was being um, arrested for some criminal endeavor. And, you know, that's, that's what is so sickening about this whole situation, is that when you're, when you're trying to do the right thing, uh, it seems like you're penalized for it. Well, all the emails I have gotten about you, the people who knew you in Otisville and, and what you've done since you've been out, is that... You're almost a poster boy for what re-entry and rehabilitation should be. And it's very discouraging to those people who are working to change the criminal justice system to see that the efforts are not being heard. And this emanates from Washington. Um, may I painful. ask a question, David? Is Pardon this, me? May I ask a question if, if that's cool? 
Sure, sure. Um, Pascal, um, my name is Giovanni, and I, I want to know, man, as as a black man who has, you know, transformed his life to only see, like, you just got locked down again for, for basically nothing, do you feel, I know you must have, like, a lot of emotions, just anger, um, do you, do you just feel like, like, this is, like, the last straw, and, and at this case, like, what if you do get deported, do you, do you think, like, maybe, I don't know, like, you probably don't even want to come back to America or or you just have just so much anger like, you know, this yeah, is what they do to our people. You know, what I mean, it's like you try and do good and then and then this happens, you know, and you look at everything that's going on in the media as of late, you know, with with the whole regime being here for four years and making uh, the nation feel more divided and having all these protests. And do you ever just feel like, man, I don't even want to come back to America. Screw this. I'm done. Uh, I, I don't know if I could say that because everything I have is here. Mm. You know, it would it would it would literally mean starting not from scratch but from under the ground, right? To you know even get a um, a sense of rebuilding, you know, my life. Um, I've I've never been to Haiti. I I have no idea what I would do there. Would, my, would I be in a shelter? Would I be on the street? You know, um, what would oh happen? I, I have absolutely no idea. It's, it's a, so it's, it's, it is a nightmare. Pascal, let me ask you this. They, were, they, they uh, denied you bond or bail uh, so that you could, which would give you an opportunity to work legally on your case. And usually bail is denied because people are considered a flight risk. But you're trying to stay here, not go somewhere else. So that seems absurd. Uh, it would help your case a lot if you could be out here fighting it until you go into court, would it not? What, explain all of that to me. I don't understand. I, the, the um, I, had, I had made a plea to the judge saying that I have a family that needs me. My fiancé and stepchildren are suffering. And I would be willing to wear an ankle bracelet if necessary. And um, they they wouldn't they wouldn't move on that. You know, they would say like something like, uh, yeah, "We we take that into consideration." That was three months ago. So the way that the the the, the court is proceeding, um, the judge already has made up her mind that she doesn't want um, to actualize any of the sympathy that she says that she feels for this this case. And, you know, as you said, it comes from the top. Wow. What are your days like in the detention center? Do you have activities or is it... Uh, Cell, just cell time. Yeah, I, I, I pretty much had to, um, you know, set up a, a way for my mind to be productive. So I'm writing. I am, you know, continuing with uh, the work that I used to do with um, my screenplay, uh, with my poetry. Um, you know, and just reading, you know, and that's pretty much it because there's nothing here. These these jails were not designed for people to be. Oh, I know um, that. Bur I know that jail. I know the Bergen County Jail. Uh, what's what's the state? The the, um, uh, the the culture like there. The other the other potential deportees deportees are they resigned to it or are they fighting it is their spirit low are they um, do they want to stay here or don't many they care them, and what countries are they from are, a lot of questions well, I, I would say uh, the overwhelming majority are from Mexico uh, from what a lot of people here from Mexico a lot of them are yeah. from Mexico um, many are from Honduras and Guatemala I would say over 90% are from um, Latin America. Central America, yeah. Right, and um, a, a, a lot of them feel that they're unwanted. They're unwanted. 
the the government has built up a um, an insurmountable uh, case where they feel that they have no wins, and instead of staying here um, months on end, they're just uh, relinquishing their right to to fight, and a lot of them are just saying, "Hey, send me back." Hmm. Have a lot of the men that you've been with gone? Have you seen them, uh, people go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. week. Every week. Oh, Deirdre, what, what can we do? Deirdre, I feel, you know, Pascal, I, I, I feel like I just want to shake the system uh, because I have the people that know you have told me so much about you about the, the college degrees that you've gotten, the programs that you've done, the life that you've led since you've been home, that you've grown into the man that everybody admires and wants to help. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have, have joined in this. Uh, I guess, Deirdre, it's getting the governor's ear. Is that it? Yes. Um, I want to encourage people to go to New Sanctuary Coalitions and join their letter-writing team. We want to get letters out to Governor Cuomo, to the Executive Clemency Bureau, which is part of the Department of Corrections and Community Service, and also to Judge Dara F. Reed at the Immigration Court. And well, give us a, you now, you said new sanctuary. How do we, what is, is there an email? Uh, you could uh, go to newsanctuarynyc.org, that's N E. W S A N C T U A R Y N Y C dot org slash letter L E T T E R underscore slash right slash letter. You have sixty seconds remaining. Slash letter. That's char- that's. That's Pascal signing off. Pascal, we'll get back to this. Deirdre Pascal, thank you for joining us. I'm looking forward to the day when you will be in the studio with me and we can tell everybody thank you. I hope that day is forthcoming. I wish you strength, hope. Know that there are people that care for you and hope that that helps you as you confront each day. It does. Bless you, my brother. Thank you. You have 30 seconds remaining. uh, We got you. We got you. Uh, It's a tough one. Uh, Pascal, uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Appreciate your being with us. Uh, Deirdre, the new sanctuary, nyc.org slash letter, and that's who we write to? Slash letter, and then underscore, and then the word writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G. I wish they'd make it easier. Um, (laughs) I know. Just the new sanctuary and, and, coalition, and that is and that's to be part of the letter writing campaign to the governor, or, or is that that is something separate? No, that that would get you to where you can do be organized into writing letters for new uh, sanctuary nyc dot org slash letter sl- uh, underline writing. You'll email that to me too. All those things because I know if I were listening. <laughs> I'd be scrambling for pencils and papers and not being able to write fast enough. So any, but my email address is drothenberg at fortunesociety.org. Uh, Deirdre will forward that to me and anybody that wants it, I will forward it back. Deirdre, this is painful. Um, uh, Richard Holer, my friend and your friend, uh, who teaches up at, um, uh, at uh, Otisville is devastated by this because he's he watched Pascal grow. He saw the man he was becoming and stayed in touch with him. The the five years he's been out here as doing exactly what reentry and rehabilitation allegedly is supposed to be, and yet uh, the gauntlet has been has come down. It is painful. And I yeah, guess I'm thankful that BAI is here so that uh, at least there's one place for an outlet to get people who are concerned and humane and empathetic can respond. Um, Deirdre, we'll stay in touch, okay? Because uh, people want to know what's happening. And we'll uh, you'll come back and hopefully Pascal will come back and this will be resolved. You know, there are two uh, two people, Colin uh, Abalon and Khalil Gumberbatch, who 
we fought for, and they both are out. So it's possible. There is hope. And I think that the, the, those that are in power, especially Cuomo, does respond to public pressure and public notice. And we thank you so much, David, for bringing this case to the attention of your listeners, especially those who are still behind bars. Yeah, thank you so much. Wow, Deidre, uh, have a good day. Um, um, Giovanni, play some music while I pull myself together, okay?